how is China looking at this golden opportunity to work with others under the BRI umbrella? So my experience with uh, BRI is in Ghana. I remember when our ship docked in the port of uh, Accra, we see this huge signs of China Harbor, mm. China Harbor Construction Company. And then I talk to local people, they say they are very proud, they say the Chinese companies are coming here, and so they are going to build the largest port in Western Africa. And so they are going to help local economies to develop. Mm. Okay, so from my point of view, BRI, my slogan when I tell people who want to understand about BRI is that BRI is a bringing people closer for a better world. That's my personal interpretation of mm. BRI. You talk about connectivity, you talk about trade, you talk about you know, people-to-people -people exchanges, but ultimately, I think it's about bringing people together for a better world. I think everybody who is really caring about people's local development, they should be very proud of what China has done to the world. From the historians, we have learned that uh, um, Chinese sailors made as many uh, seven trips to the city of Mombasa and the other cities in Nairobi, I mean, in, uh, in, in the Indian Ocean, long before the Europeans ventured into the Indian Ocean. And, and therefore, uh, we have this historical connection between China and, and, uh, and Africa via Kenya. And in the 21st century, here we are, the greatest and the most ambitious project uh, by China through BRI is, uh, is, is eventually in Kenya. This is the Standard Gauge Railway from Mombasa. And the African dream is to have that railway reach the port of Matandi in the Atlantic coast of the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm. And for the first time in our history, if this dream comes true, we'll be able to export things to Americas and Europe by sea from the Indian Ocean I because see. we'll be connected. Uh, it, it, it's something uh, we do appreciate uh, that uh, without BRI, this dream would never uh, become true.